Hello, so today I'm painting this miniature from Creature Caster. I have sprayed the whole thing black. I've drilled a hole in the bottom because I'm planning on having this thing mounted as if it's floating. So I have some of this clear kind of plastic tubing, which as you can see can still come out. So I'll put a new bit in once I've done painting and we'll try and get this floating effect. I've never tried it before, so we'll see how that goes. So paint wise, I'm gonna go from a dark green. I want this to be kind of warm. So we're gonna go with mixing some orange and black into this dark green. And then we're gonna go to a green green and then maybe a kind of cold light uh, green for the highlights. I'm happy for blacks to stay into the deeper recesses, so I'm going to do a fairly heavy dry brush covering most of the model, but any black that remains is fine by me. Now I say dry brush, but the paint can indeed be a little bit wet for what I'm doing here. In fact, when I go to the next layers, I'm happy to do that with wet paint or slightly wet paint over slightly wet paint and if there's any blending or blurring or whatever that's absolutely fine again. These are all organic shapes so we don't need to have very clear cut lines, we don't need necessarily clear cut to shadows uh, in, in the finish that I'm looking for today anyway. So just slapping it on and hoping for the best really. My thoughts are get this dry brush done and this is going to be the sketch of the contrast. So when we start bringing in washes and things, that's all going to be affected by what we do now. And so I just want to make sure that we have the lights coming from the top, just so we have some sort of contrast, some sort of showing where the light source would be coming from. Of course, the main feature of this model is going to be the eye, and so that's where I'm going to put most of my attention and most of the time of this paint job will go into. So after getting all of the dry brushing done with this kind of eerie looking blue-green, which had a better effect than I thought it was going to, from here I'm going to very messily just slap on some washes again. These are very watered down, so my plan here is to slap it on nice and quick and then I can move it around, maybe take some away if I don't like it, um, and just see how that works. Again, it's organic shapes. A bit like when I'm painting rocks and things, I'm happy to put in colours that you might not necessarily expect because it's something organic. I'm starting with orange because that was mixed into our shadow colour and it's organic and I'm happy for all of these things to blur and mix together. I'm starting with the orange because I imagine I'll be going over most of this with different colours and hopefully it'll all blend in and I probably want the orange to show up the least. These are very watered down washes, so I can move it around and take out as much as I want to. It also means they won't be as saturated as we see here when they do actually dry. And as I say, the miniature itself from Creature Caster lends itself to this so well because it's very, very recessed. It's very kind of 3D and textured. And that means I can paint it with these techniques and get a tabletop ready result very quickly. Okay, time for the main part of this miniature. This is where I will focus most of my time. It actually took me less time than I thought. I've never painted a big eye like this, and I've never used the technique that I used here. But uh, what I did was I googled various fantasy eyes. I think I saw lots of like dragon and lizard eyes and things, and I found some that I liked, and they all had this kind of textured iris. And so that's what I went for. And I decided my painting method, I was going to do it, like I've done a couple of times in other videos, a grayscale sketch. And I'm doing it this way because if I try to mix in different colors now and I messed up, it's gonna be harder to correct. Whereas right now, it doesn't really matter. I'm just working on a grayscale and it'll be much easier to fix if there were problems. So my plan is to do these striping lines that all go into the center. I don't, however, want to just paint it white. I want there to be texture, not 3D like building up paint texture, but I want there to be tonal variety, difference in luminosity and brightness. So what I'm doing is painting and I'm going over it. And that's something you don't tend to want to do because you start pulling the paint. But as I say, I want this element of texture. So I don't mind that too much. I'm also starting with a fairly watered down, taking the moisture out of the brush, white. So it's not going to lay and dry particularly bright. This means I can do it in layers, and again, hopefully build up some sort of tonal variety and texture. I also do the reverse, so I work a kind of dark purple into some of the lines, and again, that's just to build up this element of tonal variety and texture. And when I say tonal variety, I guess I mean contrast. 
So I just did this back and forth, bringing in more whites, um, going into the shadows, um, letting it dry, not letting it dry. There's all sorts of things just to have these kind of striped lines into the middle. It takes away a lot of the pressure. I'm not worried about each paint stroke. I'm just having fun with it. I, of course, was planning on painting black in the center of the eye, so I wasn't worried about getting a perfect white or result in the middle. I was just considering the textured lines around the outside. I also decided to put in a very watered down wash around the outside just to kind of blur that in a little bit. I took most of that moisture out and it was very watered down so it didn't affect the paint too much. Then it was time for the finer detail. Uh, so this is where you do have to consider your paint brush strokes much more um, to sketch in a circle. When it comes to painting the iris, I decided to go with a circle rather than the cool like slit designs, uh, just to keep with the shape of the miniature. It was a difficult thing to paint. A perfect circle is always difficult, but it's a difficult thing to paint I found on camera. But the advice I guess I would give would be whatever natural rhythm and pattern that your hand has for painting it, stick with that and keep moving the miniature around. Don't try and force your hands to go in directions that you don't feel as natural. Another benefit of doing this entire eye in grayscale is that if I do make any mistakes it's just a matter of going between black and white to fix them. It could take several layers to fix because of the extreme differences but at least I'm not having to try and get the right colors. I was happy with the shape I was able to get. I decided to go around it with some white just to fine line the uh, shape anytime there was a little bit of a bump or something I didn't want to see and also it meant there was a brighter bit just next to the black so it gave it a bit more contrast and kind of a pop. Now this bit is going to possibly be easier than you think. I think the end result plays into this kind of complicated painting system but that's not really the case. I've done most of the work now with this grayscale sketch. It's all about it not being just white but it having this kind of painted texture to it. So now I'm going in and I'm basically doing the same with a glaze uh, slash wash. So I'm not trying to filter all of it into one color. Uh, there are going to be some parts that have more paint on them and take more saturation. And I'm just gonna go round and round doing this in a few different colors. I mostly use magenta and yellow um, and that seemed to work really well. So like I say, I'm just doing the same thing, painting the lines just like I did when it was a grayscale sketch. I'm not too worried about going over the black in the middle. It will be very hard to change the color of that uh, with these very transparent colors of magenta and yellow. And I can just go over the top of it with black as well. And so after doing that a few times, this is the result that we get. We have the kind of deep purple in the outside from the wash that we did earlier, going into these cool colors in the eye. And that's basically it. After painting the teeth and the weird things around the eye and other final details, this is the result I was able to get. So I painted the base, I've mounted it, and it does look kind of cool and floaty. I've not done one of these before and I quite like the result. The eye, I think, is really eye-catching and I'm happy with that. The body, very quick paint job, but again, looks really cool. And naturally the viewer is going to look at the eye rather than the kind of body and tentacles and things. So I think it all plays together really well. I'm happy with how it looks and I'm more than happy with how quickly I was able to get the job done. And the eye itself looks really cool. And it's definitely something I will consider if I have anything else like this in the future. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.